Why does every guy cheat on you? Trust me, I know. How come girls always call you their friend? I can tell you. We'll talk about your strength and we'll talk about emotions. Secrets of Birthdays, now live for purchase. Check out yours at secretsofbirthdays.com. Namaste and welcome to Soul Horoscope's Orbits Edition. From my webcam to yours, I'm Christopher Ray Manwatecki, your astrologer and soul biographer, here to help you put the pieces of your soul biography together. We're trucking through space. The sun now has entered into the Virgo state of awareness or the IB state of awareness. This is as real as reality gets. It's the five senses. It's your health and it's the possibility of integrity and transformation. But in this particular week, we move from step two to step eight and we'll be committing to what we want to change. Looking at the moon, the moon starts in Aries, then shifts to Taurus for a couple of days where there'll be a soul pyramid in Earth, then Gemini for three days. That's going to be a little insane. And then Cancer at the end of the week where the moon will cross the grand square that we have going on. The signs most affected by this are Aries Libra, Taurus Scorpio, Gemini Sagittarius, and the Cancer Capricorn uh, spectrum is affected indeed. Now, looking at Mr. Orbitz, man. The moon, which is the fastest moving planet, is going to be what gives us uh, kind of some havoc. It starts in the root chakra, so there might be survival issues, and it goes through manifestation and ends the week in our solar plexus, so giving us stomach aches. The sun and Mercury are focusing around the heart chakra. Mercury will pass the sun this week, which means thoughts of the future can either make or break our hearts. Looking at the planets, we've got some you know, major trines going on. This soul pyramid in water, the grand trine of water, continuing forward between Jupiter, Black Lilith, Neptune and Saturn in Scorpio. Saturn in Scorpio, probably the most difficult part of that, having to be responsible with personal emotional boundaries. No more time left. Now this soul pyramid Earth, which begins with the moon in Taurus, trines up to Pluto and over to Sun Mercury in Virgo. This means that as soon as you update your emotional life, you'll see your actual physical life start to change immediately. But not change too much. That's because we're at an all stop down with the grand square or grand cross, however you want to look at it which is technically triggered by Venus in Libra. Venus in Libra is pushing for justice to be served here on the planet, and that's struggling against ego. So it's ego versus justice, kind of a classic uh, battle on Earth. And of course, Jupiter, our emotions, opposing Pluto and Capricorn, the rules. So emotions versus rules, ego versus justice. This pretty much uh, holds the traffic up on Earth. Nothing's going to change for a while, at least not in business plans, etc. probably until after Labor Day weekend. And this grand cross or grand square is really the reason why. You can see here the moon will cross through uh, Cancer uh, at the end of the week. That's where it crosses that grand square again and crosses Mars and Jupiter. So leading up to Lightcast Day next week. But before we talk about Lightcast Day and next week, let's talk about this week. Let's take the Ascension Elevator up and get a full 360 view of you. Folks, this is your captain speaking. We realize you have a choice in the astrologers you choose to fly with. And we'd just like to thank you for flying with Christopher Watecki. Hello, your honors, and welcome to 33,000 feet for a bird's eye view of you. Well, the sun has moved into Virgo, and that means we have a new topic on our spiritual hands. It's inner faith for the next 30 days. Libras and Libra Risings will be working on their spiritual junk in their trunk. This is your karma, your subconscious issues, your connection to your trust and intimacy on a spiritual level. And a lot of times it's the behavior of when we act out because we have stuff kind of trapped in our subconscious from our childhood or past lives, and it kind of comes out unwanted. So we're going to drill through that and mine that out. In another story, trying to raise prices and manifest. Saturn at six degrees says, time to make peace with your self-confidence and move forward with raising your prices and manifesting reality. And Uranus and Aries at a tipping and tense point also, saying to Libras and Libra Risings, you must innovate your mirage and your partnerships now. And you're moving into uncharted territory when it comes to strength. And with Venus and Libra, there's a lot of tug of war going on between your ego and your marriage and partnership. So a lot of tension going on to say the least. So as we start this week, we're in chapter one of Sun in Virgo. And for you, this means you're working on the intuition part of the I sense state of awareness. This is the very early realms where we have bad dreams, where we harbor stuff from childhood, where we have pain, where we kind of flinch at things. That's where we store this, in this consciousness. And so you're looking to find this and remove it. You might have some wicked dreams right now, and you might have someone from your past, a past life soulmate, or your first wife or husband, someone very cosmic, show up to get the party started. 
Now the sun moves from step two to step eight during the week. That's a very emotional Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but then by the end of the week, perking up and feeling strong and starting to get decisive about what you want to change. Also this week, Mercury uh, passes the sun. That means that thoughts move into reality. It also means that your thoughts and your awareness are subconscious. So you definitely want to operate heavy machinery carefully, right? And get your sleep. Now, Jupiter is still wrecking havoc in Cancer. This is putting pressure on expanding career and legacy. And this week, you're moving into uncharted territories when it comes to emotional boundaries. By the end of the week, that those decisions and where you are with career will either break through or break down by Sunday, Monday. So break through or break down in career. But Black Lil says it'll never break down like it has in the past. There's definitely some core multi-lifetime healing when it comes from uh, not being worried about making the wrong decision. A lot of karma with Libras and Libra Rises. I'm making the wrong decision and all that stuff. Well, it's time to let go of all that karma. It's okay. Wrong decisions are allowed on planet Earth. And Saturn in Scorpio is the part that's saying it's time to raise your prices. And Saturn is conjuncting the North Node, which means in order to kind of get there, you have to kind of fake it till you make it. Love and trust, says the North Node, that you will be able to pull off what you need to pull off. But where you are technically in the game is six degrees, which is restoring peace with your self-confidence. Ten will be when you feel self-confident and manifestation happens after the tenth degree. So just giving a little outline on how it kind of tends to work from my observation. Now, last week, the real hum digger was the moon, a full moon in Leo, big tug of war between your social life and what your inner child wanted. And that might've been a tug of war that continued through the week and weekend and might've been the beginning or the cause of your inner faith transit. So your inner faith issues might still be in your head, issues with friends or society or the last issue. But if you dig deeper, it might be a faith question. This week, things are pretty groovy. We are gonna forge ahead. We start in step two. So Sunday is a very emotional day. And with the moon in Gemini, you were pensive and back and forth with your thoughts anyways. Uh, but then the moon moves into Taurus. Excuse me, the moon was in Aries. Forgive me. The moon is in Aries. And so on Sunday, you're very emotional with karma and whatnot. Excuse me. But the moon is in the house of long-term relationships. Sometimes it's hard to keep the planets straight <laughs> in my head. But the moon was in, is in the house of long-term relationships on Sunday. And so that whole grand square of... Uh, Marriages and partnerships versus ego is triggered on Sunday, and also the other, which is Jupiter and Cancer versus Pluto. Uh, will I ever, you know, basically, will I ever feel grounded? Will my career ever go where I want to go? So Sunday's a hard day. Monday, the moon moves into Taurus. That's what I wanted to say. And that's going to shift emotions out of that pensive Gemini, back in, I expect, excuse me, out of career legacy, and move into trust and intimacy issues. And when it moves into trust and intimacy issues for yourself, this will be the point where you, we grand trine into a, a soul pyramid in Earth. This is late Monday and Tuesday. With emotions focused on what can I trust and what can I not trust, you put together that trust uh, with Pluto in Capricorn, which is changing the rules, and the Sun in Virgo, which is trying to have faith in yourself. All right. Now the Pluto in Capricorn is trying to get you to feel centered and grounded, and the Sun in Virgo is trying to, is working for you to have higher faith. So you'll find when the Moon goes into Taurus that it's about you trusting differently that shifts yourself into feeling grounded and shifts you into that phase. So it comes down to an emotional issue of trust. Hopefully you learn that before Tuesday, because on Tuesday we have quantum breakdown. So Tuesday could be some real lightning thunderstorms where karma comes up in your face. That's maybe when you get the phone call from the ex. That's maybe when you find out something. That's maybe when you have a lot of bad dreams. It's whatever is rattling in your subconscious kind of comes crashing down Monday night to Tuesday, all right? It's also maybe an issue with career. Jupiter has gone to 13 degrees, so you might start to see career break down or breakthrough, and it might be career that triggers the interfaith issue. Even though career is triggering you, it's still interfaith, so keep that in mind on Tuesday. On Wednesday, it's breakthrough, kind of processing, trying to understand. The moon is in Gemini, the sign I've been trying to tell it's in all week. So the moon is finally in Gemini, which means you're pensive, you're processing and whatnot, uh, but you're gonna understand. Thursday, Venus rules the day, your home planet. And by the way, Venus is in Libra, so the universe is giving Libras and Libra risings your home planet to really reduce you. However, gosh, it comes at the worst time, you're working on karma right now. Can it come during your birthday? Well, sometimes it does, you gotta look at the planets. However, uh, with Venus in Libra, this does mean that part of your whole processing, you do get extra juice, and when Thursday is ruled by Venus, I think you'll be able to turn your life around and feel better. So worst case scenario, if you have a breakdown on Tuesday, Thursday is the latest, it will probably go. Now, things do get a bit emotional again on Friday. That's because the moon moves into Cancer and suddenly your career issue is lit up again like a Christmas tree. So Friday's an emotional day about career that makes you emotional about your home family foundation, that makes you emotional about uh, your ego and emotional about 
your relationships and partnerships. This is the grand square. So a lot of emotion, maybe feeling a bit paralyzed. The trigger, uh, again, might be a uh, issue with career, but remember this is an interfaith transit. We're trying to get to the bottom of why we don't have faith in ourselves. It doesn't matter what triggers us. Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe it'll be okay? Those are the questions. And by Saturday, you'll be deciding. That's the stop sign. Time to decide what fears go, what weeds go, what boogeymen go and go for good. So I guess this is the worst part of the transit, in my opinion, is this first week. And by the end of the week, you'll be deciding what goes, hopefully. And it will go. Now, a couple of little helps. Now, if you'd like to jumpstart your heart, I do a 90-minute seminar on weekends. It's on a Saturday or a Sunday. It's just $34.95. And me and 10 people in the classroom, on digital classroom, we jump into the heart. I help you unclog basic childhood issues. It's really effective. People walk away smiling. Check it out. Also, if you really want to study deep with me, I do a seven-week course on Sundays called Lightcast Bootcamp, and it will help you get into your magic. 80% of my class is manifesting by the end. Check that out. Or if you don't have the time, I've got just a video you can buy and immediately download. It's kind of a super boot camp shot in the arm of how to lightcast, how to manifest. Explains it A to Z. $14.95, also available at soulmart.me. So these are all available and do help me stay on the air, and I appreciate all of your contributions. All right, Libra and Libra Rising, that's all I have for this week. Hang in there. It's just going to be one hard week, I think, and then we'll be okay. And I'll see you in seven more days. Namaste and live, love, be. Thank you.